بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزيدنا علما يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم أمين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to another session of the series uh, Heroes of Islam. Last week, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman from OMA uh, talked about the story of Salma al Farisi. And next week, we have another guest speaker, inshallah, uh, Sheikh Ammar Abdul Fattah, a current student at Medina University in the Faculty of Hadith. He will talk about Abu Huraira, a student of Hadith, uh, talking about uh, the narrator of Hadith will be a very, very beneficial one, inshallah ta'ala, so make sure you come uh, next week as well. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, radiallahu anhu, and uh, Mus'ab ibn Umair, radiallahu anhu, two, uh, two uh, sahaba. Um, so, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, his original name is Khalid ibn Zayd. And uh, before we start, does anyone know what's special about him? Yani he's known for what? Does this name ring a bell? Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. No, he's not. No, he's from Medina, so he's from the Ansar, yes. Mm, yes, that's the most uh, uh, prominent uh, feature of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari and what, what he said is that when the Prophet والسلام, first arrived at Medina, before the masjid was built, before he had his own quarter, uh, for, the, uh, for that short period of time in the beginning, he stayed with Abu Ayyub al-Ansari in his home. Right? So this is the first host of the Prophet والسلام, in Medina, and that is what he's known for. And this is not known by us, by the later people. It is also known by the Sahaba. عنهم, and so when Ibn Abbas عنه, was the governor of Kufa under the Khilafah of Ali, عنه, once Abu Ayyub al-Ansari visited uh, Ibn Abbas, and uh, Imam al-Dhahabi mentioned, he treated him with extreme hospitality. فَبَالَغَ فِي إِكْرَامِهِ يعني He, he uh, dedicated all of his efforts and wealth to honoring this guest, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. And the reason is, he said, لَأَجْزِيَنَّكَ عَلَىٰ إِنزَالِكَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ I surely, I want to repay you for hosting the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And that's what he's talking about. So, uh, his original name is Khalid ibn Zayd. He is one of the representatives that attended the second Aqaba meeting, uh, which is when a delegation from Medina, 75 in total, 72 men, three women, they came and they met with the Prophet ﷺ at this place called Aqaba, which is at the outskirts of Mecca, and they negotiated terms and they agreed that we will uh, host you and we will support you, we will protect you, uh, and uh, you will migrate to Medina. And so uh, it is mentioned that it is at this uh, meeting when the Prophet ﷺ changed his name to Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. Um, and so he was recognized even before the Hijrah happened and he was already uh, present before the Hijrah happened. He was already a Muslim before that happened. So um, when the Prophet ﷺ arrived at Medina, obviously everyone wants to host him. It's a great honor. They all love him. Um, and so everyone is uh, inviting him, everyone wants him to go to their home. And so now there is a dilemma. If he chooses someone over others, it could start a fitna, right? It could be favoritism and people will uh, either uh, be extreme in their respect for that person or even develop some kind of ill feelings towards that person. So what should the Prophet do in this situation? And what did he do? Does anyone know? Uh, he said, I will leave it to the camel. This camel is ma'mura. It is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, wherever it stops, it, it is the qadr of Allah, right? Nobody has any problem with that. And so they say, okay. So he was riding on the camel and the camel was walking uh, at her own well until, uh, which is interesting, in the Arabic language, baraka, this verb means the, for the camel to kneel down. It means baraka, which is an interesting word. It shares the same root as the word baraka, blessing. So the, the, the camel kneeled at the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari anhu, which is definitely, uh, you know, everything happens by the qadr of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided for Abu Ayyub al-Ansari to be the first host of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the Prophet sallam, said, okay, I will stay with you. So his house has uh, two levels. 
And he, of course, he wants the Prophet to stay on the upper, upper level, out of respect. But the Prophet وسلم, is also a man of humility and a man of uh, respect and manners. And he said, no, you are the owner of the house. I am a visitor, right? I'm your, I'm, I'm your guest, so you should be on the upper floor. I will stay on the ground floor. And so he insisted uh, until Abu Ayyub al-Ansari you know, couldn't, uh, uh, couldn't uh, choose otherwise. So the Prophet stayed on the ground floor. However, one day when he was on the top floor, he accidentally uh, kicked over a vessel of water. And so the water started uh, spreading on the upper floor. And back then, you know, the material is not waterproof. So the water starts dripping through the, uh, through the ground and, dripping, uh, and dropping to the ground floor. And so he became very anxious. He woke up his wife and they used their only bed sheet, their only cover to absorb the water, put it on the ground and absorb the water. They don't want to disturb the Prophet ﷺ. But when this happened, he came down again. He said, Ya Rasulullah, please stay on the upper floor because this is make, making me anxious. Give me peace of mind. Please move up. I will stay on the ground floor. And so the Prophet ﷺ eventually agreed and he moved up. And uh, while they were... Uh, staying together in this house, the Sahaba, the, the rest of the Ansar, they used to send food to them, uh, primarily to the Prophet والسلام, but he's يعني, also a beneficiary of the food that they sent. And so whenever the Prophet saw some uh, eat, it's a lot of food maybe, and he couldn't finish, he will give the rest to Abu Ayyub al-Ansari and his wife. And this was very common uh, during that time. The Prophet والسلام, used to share food with the Sahaba. This is a great habit actually. We should also share food. Um, uh, it's part of the adab of uh, Islamic uh, brotherhood and sisterhood. It's a part of our uh, connection that we share food. We should eat together. Uh, there are many ahadiths that talk about the blessing of eating together and sharing food. Uh, so we shouldn't become too individualized and uh, everyone eat by himself. So he would eat and whatever is left, he would give to Abu Ayyub al-Ansari anhu. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, kunta tursilu bit ta'am. You sent me food. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I look at the plate and I try to find the traces of where you put your finger. Like where you took the food from and I will take from the same place. All of his love for the Prophet I mean, they really loved him to that, uh, to that level. They used to compete uh, to, uh, use, uh, to get to the water that he made wudu with. And so tabarruk, to seek blessing from the Prophet والسلام, is permissible. But it's not permissible according to the scholars when it comes to any other individual. When it comes to the Prophet, it is permissible. So they used to seek blessing from this uh, blessed Prophet And so we don't know much about Abu Ayyub al-Ansari al um, apart from this uh, particular owner, but we know that he's a mujahid. So Imam Dhahabi mentioned that he participated in the Battle of Badr and he participated in every single, uh, every single battle in Islamic history except one year when the leader of the army, and this was already after uh, the Prophet ﷺ passed away, he was still active in jihad. But one year there was uh, an expedition and the leader of the army was very young. And so he, he was reserved, he was an old man, and so he didn't go out. But the next year he regretted. And he asked himself, like, why does it bother you when a young man is the leader? Because you're fighting for the sake of Allah. Why should, it bother, why should it matter to you who's the leader of the army? He regretted and he said, I will never do this again. So he continued to participate in battles even as an old man. And eventually, in the final battle that he participated in, which is under the command of Yazid ibn Muawiyah, it is the uh, expedition to uh, Constantinople which is now Istanbul, right? The Prophet ﷺ had a hadith. He predicted that one day the Muslim army uh, led by a great general will conquer uh, Constantinople and what a great general and what a great army. He praised the army, he praised the leader. So uh, very early on the Muslims were trying to fulfill this prophecy and so they were eager to uh, conquer Constantinople. And so he was in this army under the command of Yazid ibn Muawiyah, but he became very sick. And at this time he was already an old man. He became very sick, so Yazid came to visit him and he asked, uh, do you have any need? He said, yes, I do have a need. He, have a, he has a very special wish. He said, after I die, take my body with you in the army and transport my body to the farthest point of the enemy territory that you can reach. And you keep going forward, right? Keep fighting with them, keep going forward until you can no longer go any further 
bury me there. And so that is basically at the outskirts of Constantinople, under one of the walls of the Romans. He was buried there. His wish was fulfilled. He was buried there. And fast forward many years later, when Sultan Mahmed al-Fatih, the conqueror, uh, Sultan Mahmed, he led the army and he conquered Constantinople. And during that battle, he actually, they actually drew inspiration from the story of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. It was recorded historically, Allah alam whether it's authentic, but it was recorded that Sultan Mahmed once gave a, uh, uh, a speech to his soldiers. And he said that the companion of the Prophet والسلام, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, before us, he came to this place wanting to conquer it and he's buried here as a symbol to encourage us to continue. And so we should uh, conquer this city uh, also in memory of his wish. And so that's very uh, inspiring to the soldiers. Eventually they conquered Constantinople and it's nowadays Istanbul. Uh, so he lived as a Mujahid, he died as a Mujahid. Um, Apart from that, uh, the Prophet والسلام, he appeared him and Mus'ab ibn Umayr to be brothers. And so all of this pairing by the Prophet وسلم, has wisdom in it. So Mus'ab ibn Umayr is the first messenger of Islam sent to Medina. And Abu Ayyub al-Ansari is one of the first representatives of Medina to meet the Prophet والسلام. So that's, there's a connection there. <coughs> and so that's why we're going to in the same talk, move on to uh, Abu, uh, Mus'ab ibn Umair uh, anhu. So Mus'ab ibn Umair, it is mentioned that he's uh, from a very wealthy family in Mecca. His parents uh, were very rich. And so he was one of the most spoiled and most, most uh, uh, wealthy youths of Mecca. He used to wear very good clothes and live a luxurious life. And when the Prophet والسلام, started spreading the message of Islam, and in the beginning at the house of Darul Arqam, this uh, private quarter of studying, uh, Mus'ab became curious and he was a teenager at this time. So he joined the halaqa at Darul Arqam and he immediately became convinced that this is the truth. And so he accepted Islam and his parents were very angry. In the beginning, his mother chained him in the house, uh, made him a prisoner. And so, he, he was persecuted by his own family members uh, due to their hatred against Islam. And so during the first hijrah, the first migration, the Prophet ﷺ ordered him uh, in order to avoid this persecution to migrate with the uh, rest of those uh, weak Sahaba, uh, those who don't have family protection. And so he participated in the first hijrah. And then uh, later on, uh, when after the first Aqaba meeting, the Medina, the people of Yathrib, expressed their interest in accepting Islam. The Prophet ﷺ sent him, Mus'ab ibn Umair, as a messenger, as a teacher to Medina to teach them about Islam. And still, at this time, he was a teenager. Some narrations say that he was maybe 15 years old. Um, so he's very young. But he went to Medina, and within you know, a short amount of time, the, the entire city of Medina basically accepted Islam, right? And that's why when the Prophet ﷺ came, they were all celebrating him, because they're all Muslims. Uh, so that's partially uh, the fruit of the hard uh, labor, the, the work, the da'wah of Mus'ab ibn Umair And uh, after you know, he migrated to Medina, as I mentioned last time, most of the muhajireen, they, when they went to Medina, they became very poor. Either they left their wealth uh, in Mecca, or they were poor to start with. Some of the believers, the muhajireen, they were poor to start with, like Ibn Mas'ud. But he was wealthy before. But due to his love for Islam and due to his loyalty to the Prophet والسلام, he abandoned his uh, wealthy lifestyle. He left his parents um, and he uh, migrated penniless. He migrated to, to Medina and he had no money. And so Ali anhu, once he mentioned, uh, or this is recorded by Ibn Ishaq, Ali radiallahu anhu, he, started, he, he, he was first talking about himself. He said he used to draw water for a Jewish man for a handful of dates. We mentioned that that's his job, that's his trade. He used to take water from the well, irrigate the gardens for a Jewish man, and in exchange for just a handful of dates, just a few dates. So some of the Sahaba, um, they lived a very poor life. He said, I saw uh, Mus'ab ibn Umair radiallahu anhu wearing a patched uh, garment, you know, very ragged, uh, very uh, broken uh, uh, garment. And so Ali, he even said, Like I also, Ali said, I knew that he was, I know he was once one of the most uh, 
luxurious use in Mecca. <coughs> and so uh, he said when the Prophet ﷺ saw both of them in this poverty, he said his eyes became wet. Yani the Prophet ﷺ was feeling sad for the Sahaba as well. And he asked them, are you better off today or when you were enjoying the comfort and the material uh, wealth in Mecca? فَقُلْنَا We said, Ali and uh, Mus'ab, they said, نَحْنُ يَوْمَئِذٍ خير. We were better off that day in the past, but listen to the reason. Not because it's uh, more comfortable, more enjoyable. He said, because we had sufficient provision so that we have free time for worship. I and mean, we don't have to work so hard every day and become so tired, we could afford to uh, worship when we were in Mecca. So the Prophet ﷺ said, no, rather, uh, you are better off this day because now you are people of Iman and now you are uh, in an Islamic environment and community. So I want you to imagine yani Mus'ab ibn Umair, radiallahu anhu, he was, um, you know, it's, it's hard for someone who has experienced uh, wealth to you know tune down to a simpler lifestyle it's very hard to do this like if someone flies first class all the time you put him in economy class he's gonna complain a lot if someone wears comfortable clothes all the time and you give him a simple clothes he's gonna complain so he used to live a very comfortable life food used to be brought to him he has servants and he has uh, you know very fine uh, provision but now he's living uh, in this condition it's very hard for him but this is the sacrifice they made for Islam. The Sahaba عنهم, they were willing to let go of a lot of things in order to hold on to Iman. And this is why do you remember when Abdurrahman ibn Auf, when he was brought some food and he started saying that Mus'ab ibn Umair was martyred and he was better than me. Um, and so yeah, let's talk about his martyrdom first. So he was martyred during the Battle of Uhud, which is a great honor as well. Um, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about uh, the Battle of Uhud and He praised uh, the people who participated in the Battle of Uhud as well. Um, so during the Battle of Uhud, He was the banner bearer, even before Ali. He was the first banner bearer uh, in the Battle of Uhud. And then when the uh, confusion or when the uh, battle uh, changed tides, turned tides, uh, Muslims started scattering. Only a few people were around the Prophet Ali wasalam. He's one of them. And then uh, his uh, figure and his skin color resembles that of the Prophet So during that confusion, in order to protect the Prophet he started saying with a loud voice, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, to make the mushrikun think that he's the Prophet as a disguise, sort of, uh, so, to, so to speak. So they took that, they took that and they actually rushed to him and they cut off one of his arm first, the right arm. So he was holding the, the banner with the right arm. Now the right arm is cut off. He moved it to the left. They cut off his left arm. And so he held it with his toe shoulder blades. He held onto the banner of Islam um, to, to protect the honor of the Muslims. And then eventually he was martyred due to this heavy injury um, uh, and became a martyr um, along with the many, the, uh, around 70 other martyrs of the Battle of Uhud. And so the uh, so Abdurrahman ibn Auf, that's why he was crying when he remembered Mus'ab and he said he's better than me. Um, he let go of the wealth. He stood um, strong with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Battle of Uhud. And so uh, he was indeed a, a hero of Islam. And so uh, the, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they had to let go of a lot of things um, in order to uh, in order to increase their iman, in order to uh, protect Islam. Nowadays, we are not really making any sacrifices. I mean, no sacrifice is required of us. What have you let go of for Islam? Rather, a lot of people nowadays, they are thinking, what can I gain if I enter Islam? What can I gain if I become practicing? What will you give me if I attend this halaqa? What's in it for me? Which reminds me of, there's a Taiwanese river. I heard this story in Taiwan. He accepted Islam, and every time he makes ruku'a, he says, fasih, 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 money, money, money. Every time he makes sajda, he says, fasih, 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 money, money, money. Um, some people, they join Islam for the dunya, and some people, they let go of the dunya for Islam. And we should be people who are willing to let go of many things. And so when you look at their example, you should really ask yourself, 
يعني كيف نحن منهم how far are we from them and what should I do what kind of sacrifices am I willing to make uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain his pleasure there's not much uh, mention of Musa'ab ibn Umayr and uh, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari other than this uh, but uh, later on you know uh, if you go to Turkey nowadays in Istanbul there is a district actually called uh, Ayyub and uh, there is a masjid they call it Sultan Ayyub Jami they call him Sultan Ayyub uh, they built a masjid there um, and uh, several of the uh, the, the, the Osman Khalifa or the Khalifa of the Ottoman Empire they uh, showed great respect uh, to him in fact they used to have their uh, coronation ceremony is it called coronation yeah they used to have their coronation ceremony at Sultan uh, Ayyub Jami uh, because they think that Sultan Ayyub or Ayyub, uh, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari is the forerunner when it comes to conquering Constantinople. So, so they think of their victory as a continuation of his struggle, of his efforts. So they used to uh, yani accept, the, uh, uh, accept the Khilafah at that place. And there's not much uh, else mentioned about them, but uh, if we contemplate on these simple points, I think there will be uh, some transformative uh, impact on us as well. So uh, be willing to be, be willing to sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what, what Allah azza wa jalla will give you in return is definitely more than what you give up uh, for Him. And uh, be, how to say, be prepared to to lose things for Islam. And because I mean, this word is a test and sometimes the hardest test is to let go of something. And so when people are involved in a Haram relationship, boyfriend girlfriend relationship. Yeah, it's painful to let go. It's, it's definitely painful, but that's what you should do for the love of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's a test, and uh, for some people who have a illegal, uh, impermissible source of income, it's hard to let go. Yeah, it's easy money, it's good money, but for the love of Allah, you have to let it go. And that is, um, you know, so some scholars they say Islam is basically uh, one way of summarizing Islam is it's just two parts. One part is the things to do. And one part is the things to let go, part the things that you do not do, right? You, you, you give up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's a lot of talk about what we should do, but uh, we should also be conscious about what we shouldn't do, what we should stop, what, what we should discard and give up and throw away for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, uh, so that's, uh, yeah, that's the two heroes that uh, we have talked about today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them and with all the Sahaba. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to learn from their examples and develop these great qualities. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with them um, on, uh, on, the, on the Day of Judgment and enter paradise along with them. Uh, last time, uh, do you remember Shaykh Abdul Rahman? Um, he mentioned that, can you picture that when you go to Jannah, you can actually ask the Prophet ﷺ about his Sahaba, or you can ask the Sahaba about their stories, right? Um, and, and so, Jannah is very, it's, it's real, right? And, uh, أحببت, you will be with whom you love is real. And surely we love to be with our family members, we love to be with our parents and our children and our spouses, but we should also love to be with them. And that's one of the means of being close to them on the Day of Judgment, just by loving them, loving the Sahaba and loving the Prophet A scholar was asked, um, describe for us the pleasures of Jannah, what attracts you? He said, Fiha Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah is there and the Sahaba are there, it should be enough to attract us.